Alright everybody, welcome back, and here we are back live with our Raspberry Pi. We have our two jumper wires, a resistor, and an LED light. Now, uh, the only thing that we're kind of missing from this circuit that you'll probably see a lot of is a capacitor. So what a resistor is doing, just, just for a quick, quick basic, I promise I won't talk too long on it, but you should know if you don't. A resistor's purpose is to resist um, the current. So what you can think of a a circuit as and current as like a current of water so when you add a resistor to a circuit what it's going to do is it's, it's literally going to resist that current and it will change the current of the entire circuit right so again if you think of it as water if one area of the river for example flows at like two feet a second and the other part of the river is flowing at 18 feet a second when it gets to the part of two feet a second it's going to overflow, right? And so you can't have that happen in a circuit if you've built it right anyways. Um, so what a resistor will do is slows down the entire circuit at specific points. And in this circuit here, we're just having one resistor. We're not going to split uh, the circuit. So once you do that, then you start getting into a little bit deeper math. This should be pretty simple. Again, your LED, you could do the math. Um, but if you're not comfortable with doing the math, just start with a really, really high, <laughs> high resistance and go from there. So uh, let's start plugging everything in. So first thing we want to do is, I guess we'll plug in the LED first. And so as you can see on the LED, it's actually it's got a different length of uh, plugs here, and the one that's longer is always positive. The one, well, I guess it, you know depending on how you cut it, but officially. The convention is the longer is the positive, shorter is negative. And if you've ever seen like a diagram, um, it's going to have like a long line and a short line. The short line is the negative terminal of the battery and the long line is the positive terminal of the battery. So uh, anyway, we'll plug in our LED uh, and just plug it in with the negative uh, facing towards you. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just put it into my breadboard. Now sometimes as you poke something into a breadboard, just it doesn't want to slip in really easily. Don't force it. Um, it should kind of glide in. If you if you find yourself really pushing very hard, um, just take a second and uh, try again. So anyway, I'm trying to figure out what the heck to do with this. So I just want to make sure you all see where I'm plugging everything in. So you just have to make a circuit. The next thing you want to do. Oh, and if you don't know anything about breadboard, um, you should probably. Uh, research a little bit on the breadboard. The idea of the breadboard is just so that you um, can build the circuit without soldering. And it's not just for you know noobs and amateurs. Um, it's a good way to just to quickly test and or build and then test a circuit before you actually you know commit and begin soldering. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to want to resist this. I'm sorry I plugged this into a kind of a funky spot. I just want to make a cute little cube or square. Not a cube. Anyway um, you have to, um, besides ground, I, I suppose, doesn't matter as much, but you want everything connected. So right now we've got, you know, the positive is over here, this is the negative, and we want to connect our resistor, and it needs to be in the same kind of row, basically, as our um, LED light. I'll show this to you real closely in a second. Now, ideally you would trim the resistor so it's like, you know, flush. But for this, we'll just leave it sticking up. But as you can see, you know, there, here's the negative here, and then there's the resistor plugged in. There's the resistor that goes into the side row here. Now what we want to do is connect. Let's connect our ground. Um, so we'll put the male end uh, into our breadboard here. Now this could really go anywhere um, on these on this side. So you can put it here or here or here, but we're going to put it here just to make everything nice and fluid. And this we will have as our ground. So the ground pin from if you know from the top absolute right is the third pin down. Just be totally careful here uh, as you're connecting things. So one, two, three, and they're all just so close together. Um, you just don't want to make a mistake. So that is our ground. Okay. So now I've connected that, and I lost my other jumper. Here it is. 
Um, now what we want to do is connect the positive, and we're, we set GPIO pin 18. If you don't know uh, which one 18 is, it's going to be another um, three pins down from where you just plugged in the ground, so it's the sixth pin down. So count one, two, three, four, five, six. So a gap of two pins. Just have to make everything nice and clear because we don't want anybody screwing up. So again, we'll push this one down. That's plugged in. Now the last thing we want to do is plug that into our pin or our board here. Okay, and you want to plug it in, you know, flush with the positive in the same row as the positive uh, part of your LED is. So now that we've done that, everything's hooked up, and but the program is not running. So now we want to go back over to our um, uh, terminal and begin running this program. So the next thing we want to do is uh, open up the terminal. And right now, we aren't in that home slash pi. So what we're going to want to do is cd into home slash pi. And just to make sure we got where we want to go, let's ls. And sure enough, there is our uh, file that we want to run. So to run this program, what we have to type in is sudo python. And so this just says super user do using python we want to run um, our program, which we call GPIO example.py. Now, when we hit enter, the goal is this, it's going to ask us the password. And uh, obviously, now that we're running the program, you can see here the LED light has um, become illuminated. So this means our lock is engaged. But let's say... Um, let's say we type in what is pi, or yeah, what is pi? What if the person says 3.14? Hits enter, wrong password, nothing happens. What if the person enters the correct password? And they do awesome. Enter, sure enough, there goes the light, and in a few seconds it will turn back on. Sure enough, our lock is back engaged. So you can do all kinds of stuff. Now, if you wanted to, you know, just kind of have a little good time, you could say if uh, we could pop back over here and we could kind of edit the program a little bit. And so let's just have ourselves a bit of a good time. And let's do this. All true. Time. We'll do this. And instead of sleep four, let's do 0 0.02. And then we'll copy this, come over here, and then we'll do a time sleep another point uh, .02. We'll save our new program. We'll come back over to the terminal here and to exit this little program you could just hit the X here. But let's not do that. Let's do hold control, press C, and that'll break the script. Now as you can see our the LED light itself has remained on. So uh, what I should have done <laughs> is uh, entered the right password then interrupted it and turned it off because if you leave the pin on the pin will stay on. Um, but otherwise, uh, let's go ahead and, and rerun this program. So you can just hit the up arrow and it puts the same thing in there. And now what it's going to do is it's just going to flash our light really, really, really fast. Um, I'm not even sure. Uh, hopefully my camera is picking it up. But if you do this in person, you'll see that the light is indeed flashing really fast. We could do 0.5 seconds instead. We could save it. We can come back over to our terminal. Control C stops it. Up arrow. Hit enter one more time. And now it flashes every half a second. Okay, so you can start playing around with the program and the LED light and stuff. And this is just, you know, a really quick example of having your program interact with uh, the physical world, which is really cool because now we can do we can do all kinds of stuff, right? You can use your input to the computer to interact with a camera, motors like wheels. You can make like a rover that interacts with your uh, keyboard input as we go on. Um, all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's just the, the possibilities are really uh, infinite. So it's really exciting. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the video. As usual, thank you for watching. Thank you for your support, your subscriptions. 
Hope you guys uh, have fun with your GPIO. I'm, I'm just enthralled with this thing. Um, and until next time.